Good morning, everybody. We have got a what do you, how you do that? a special preview or a special show today? It's a Sunday mm -hmm. in um, July. What, are we, what is today? July twenty fifth. Twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. Mm hmm. Yeah, tomorrow, Already twenty fifth. So we are we were reminiscing about this morning, and I started we shared. You know, I've thought about doing a vlog, a V L O G, a vlog, and um, it's just you know in on top of everything else we got going on and i would love to do a vlog because i don't know because we got people following us wanting to know what's going on and and, and i just seem like to always have some crazy ideas and some things that i'm doing but i talked about the other day about how we dream a lot about things not just us here but everybody and everybody it's every human dreams about doing things and and a lot of times our dreams don't come to uh, reality right and uh short i've got dreams that i've never been able to accomplish yet but the dreams that we have accomplished um has been kind of cool and it's been a, a big chance we've rolled the dice we've thrown it out there and, and things have happened and and, and over the years been a, a bunch of su uh, success and a bunch of failures and that's about life right well one of the successes i wanted to show you is is um if you guys have not followed us for years before we got into tiny homes I built a resort, okay, and this is the resort here. It's called Brothers Cove, and this is the resort that I developed a few years back in 2000. I built this, and then um, it's got 73 homes. I designed on a eight and a half by 11 piece of paper all the homes, designed them, built them, physically built probably 50 of them. Till the last few years, we had three or four guys crews, and I had to run them. But I physically grabbed the logs and put the metal on them and the glass and the plumbing and the wiring and everything. Hauled the block and laid the block and all that stuff. Poured the footers. Walked the walls and with a pump truck. And I physically did all that. And the only reason I say that is to let you know that I have a hands-on with pretty much anything that I do. But what I wanted to show you in that development, we had these homes right here. And these homes are built on platforms. So this right here is a platform, and you can see the tops of the trees right there, right? So that platform is when you stand on that porch, you look down on top of the trees. So the platform was at tree level, which is probably, what, 30 to 50 feet high. And then we put a three-story home on top of that concrete platform. So it was almost like a bridge that we built, suspended in air. And it was cantilevered. We had massive footers that were built out of piers and they had big tubular structures that went up and we had a girder that went across here and then the floor joists went across the girder and they cantilevered out about eight or ten feet across to carry all that and then we poured concrete on top of it then built the house then there's 15 of these homes right on down through here so they all go down to here and what's really unique is these homes look out this way look out this way and look out this way and the way they stair step going up the hill you wouldn't believe the privacy. There's a hot tub right here. And when you're sitting in a hot tub, they can't see you because of this roof line. They can't see you because they're looking up underneath the floor system from here. And you got this beautiful panoramic view from that hot tub. There's an outdoor fireplace. There's a three-story home. So you got a deck, deck, and another deck. And each one of these had a jacuzzi inside the bedroom with a wall of glass that looked over at the panoramic view. Actually, right down there, Amanda, is the old farm that the we own. The old farm, yeah. So I actually lived right there. Right there, just yeah. Before we, just before it all ended, and that was I had a personal home down in there. It was a 150-acre farm, mm -hmm. and it was, yeah, don't, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah, let's not go there. So it's all gone now. But all gone. This, this resort is still there. It's still there. We just popped it up on, the, on YouTube. So these are platform homes. And you're saying, Randy, why are you showing something you did years ago? Well, for a couple reasons. One reason is to let you know that as, as we build your tiny home, the experience that we have in construction, the experience we have in developing land, and how we think um, about developing and building homes. This is probably a current video or a picture because when we left there, all these trees were not matured yet. Yeah. And all the foundations you could see, you can't see any of the platforms anymore. That's all the steel is just hidden by the vegetation. Yeah. And this is what I mean about these communities that we're building here, right where we're at, and across the street on our new mountain development, is that over the years, this becomes 
better and better and better. It doesn't become worse. When no. you allow Mother Nature to come in and do her thing, mm -hmm. it becomes beautiful, all right? Thick and lush. There's a community called Sequoia Hills community in Knoxville. And I don't know when they developed it, probably in the 20s. But they didn't change the landscape. They didn't destroy the vegetation. They went in and they, they, it looks like to me, that they went in there and they cut the roads and they followed the contour of the land. And then they plugged in these beautiful, beautiful homes. I mean, these homes are million dollar homes. And they're little cottages mixed with these homes. They're and beautiful. It, and it was just, a, it's, it's an exquisite subdivision mm -hmm. in Knoxville called Sequoia Hills. And I don't know if they've got a website, I didn't look it up. But I remember when I got to Knoxville and I wasn't a developer or builder or anything. And I said, you know, one day if I ever get to develop any property, I want it to resemble Sequoia Hills. So when I did Brothers Cove, this is at the top of our mountain. In Brothers Cove, this road winds and winds up the mountain. And we used to take our trees and pull them back with cords and ropes, dig the footers, carry all the lumber in at the house site, build the house, stain the house, get it completely done, cut the rope, and the trees would go back to the house. And it looked like the house was there a hundred years. It had been there established, it wasn't a new construction. Right. No builders that I've ever seen will do that because of the amount of labor that it takes to carry physically all of our, our lumber inside. You have to pump all your concrete. You don't get a truck that drives around the house site. It's cheaper to do it that way. But I had a pump truck at every single home that we built. We, here we actually had a crane that had to come over and dump concrete on that platform. And then we had another crane because the footers are down this, on this mountain. That mountain is an 80% grade, which is you can't, hardly, you can't even walk up it, right? And so it was a really, to me, it was an, an amazing thing that we did. I'm, and I'm, um, I'm not an engineer, but I have a friend of mine who is an engineer that engineered all the footers and everything we have. And it, to this day, it's still good. So we, they're probably, what, 10, 15 years old now? 15, I would yeah. say. So, but Randy, again, why are you showing us that, right? Well, I'm going to take this concept. I hope to take it. And I can always, we can make it work. Oh, can we mention really quick, you were the first one to do it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well... In Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, and Sevier County area, Dollywood, and the whole thing, you guys know mm -hmm. the tourism. It's very steep and mountainous property. The reason I took the platform uh, idea and I wanted to run with it is because normally, uh, Tom and us, we have been on job sites where instead of doing platforms and steel, so let me show you here just a second, kind of what happens is on a steep property is either you on a mountain that goes down like this, either on a mountain, guys will dig footers, right? They'll mm -hmm. form their footer up and they put concrete in here. And then they build a wall. And it's concrete. I mean, it's solid block. And they go back. So they build this whole foundation. I'm sorry, it's looking down. I'm not a good artist. But then that's, that's just cinder block. And then they pour it full of concrete and they fill it all the way up and then they got a footer back here and they put their little concrete and then this this whole wall is full of block right on the sides and they fill that full of concrete but we have seen homes that are almost 50 feet high 50 feet of concrete block filled with concrete on a footer down here and it's just so you got an extension ladder right as a carpenter and we've done this you got to put a sill plate there. And then you've got to put a girder beam up here. Then you got to put floor joists across here. And you're 50 feet high. We've had guys where that ladder's kicked in and they've ladders come back here and they've fallen. We've even come in here and put our own little footer and put a floor inside this thing. So this we can just work off of then to build a house. And I thought to myself, you know what? I just don't want to do that kind of stuff. I lost my paper towel. Here it is. And I'm, I don't want to lay a block because of the this block will give it'll crack you got to put steel down it it is in a massive amount of labor to build something like that so what i did is i said man is there any other way so we didn't went here and my buddy who's an engineer we cut a big old huge pier in here and we formed that sucker up and it was four foot by four foot by eight foot solid concrete and we put them bolts in in the concrete and they were anchor bolts it went in like that 
And then we sat with this huge crane, and this is a little bitty road up on that resort. And we would set this big, huge, had a steel plate like that plate, and it went up and had another plate. And we'd set them piers, and it would be a, and this, this now is a flat spot, and you can't physically walk up that hillside. And then up here is a road, right? So what we did is we set them piers, we dug, dug another big footer that went 50, well, 65 feet and it was full of concrete, but it was about four feet deep, and we just cut it in that mountain all the way there. After we hid that, we had bolts sticking up here, then we took a big, huge girder, and we set it right here on top of that. And then we took another floor joist, and we set it out like that. And this was a webbed floor joist. And this stuck out, cantilevered out like that. And then we poured concrete on top of that. Isn't that something? Then, <laughs> then out here, we built a house. And then you parked your car on top of that. Mm. And when you had your handrail and your porch, and that was all them decks and out here, and here's your hot tub, and wee jumping and stuff, and you see this panoramic view. And from here, and look, here the, the mountain still goes, and here's your trees. Looking down on the trees. Yeah. And that's what happened. That was it. And it was an amazing... That, that is what this is. You got it. That's it right there. That's it. So they're saying, I'm sure you guys are like, okay, Randy, okay. Toot your own horn. You did great. Everything did work. Well, well I lost everything in 09, 010. Well, I lost everything, walked away. and So I don't own that anymore. And I built them homes to sell. So I really didn't own the houses to lose, but lost a resort like a management company that we owned had know, about 70 homes on so again why am i saying all this just to i want to i want to kind of people that don't know us as a company we're not just tiny home builders um we we have developed land we've developed we built physically built homes uh you know i was a high school teacher if it means anything to graduate from college i did that which was an amazing feat for me personally but um so we got some credentials just to give you guys some trust in who we are as people, uh, as a company. And um, so what happened, um, and in that, we didn't file bankruptcy or anything. We just actually, it was uh, during 08, all the homes that were, what, we had 60, 70 homes on there and I think 35 or 40 went into foreclosure. Yeah. So we couldn't rent them out anymore. And when it come, we tried to save it for a year. We stayed in there, man and I and David. Three people ran a company that took almost 40 people to run, and we physically ran it. The three of us ran it for a year without any help. By ourselves, uh, laundry. We didn't. Cleaning. We had a laundry service, and yeah. we and they used to come with a truck and do yeah. laundry. Yeah. We took my mom and dad's washer and dryer, mm -hmm. and we had a couple of uh, people donate them, yeah. and we put them in a in a shed, in a shed, and we did our own laundry. So well David and I. Amanda worked in the office, booking and all that stuff. David and I would go do laundry till three or four in the morning. We cleaned cabins. We did all the cleaning. We did all the laundry. Did all the maintenance. We did it for a year. For a year, and we're talking it was one bedrooms to a nine bedroom. And did it all seventy. And we yeah. We had almost what 30, 40 people staff. Oh yeah. And we ran the whole place for a year. There was still weddings By going ourself. on. <laughs> By ourselves. It was so exhausting. When the bank that we were working with, uh was we everything was going good until they went into forbearance no they went in we they gave us forbearance because we weren't making our payments but they said that's fine the whole world was in a mess nobody right? was making payments yeah. yeah so they but they embezzled money mm -hmm. the bank did we didn't know about mm -hmm. fdic came in and shut their bank shut that bank down called our note due i don't have you know we have a line of credit a couple million dollars and we're making payments even with all those foreclosures in there we were making it we were yeah. we were existing we were living yeah and when they shut the uh when the fdic came in and shut them down another i guess how it works i don't know but the, another bank it was given to another bank to run mm -hmm. and they they uh said any notes that are due on their books has to be paid off done and at that time you can't get a loan there's nobody gonna loan me money no. and i really wasn't that savvy about banking i was a carpenter i was a builder i had two banks i worked with and that's all i knew i was just borrowing money and building and um they gave us 30 days to walk and it was done i mean over and 
And you made every offer. You told them that you would maintain the property. You'd keep everything up. They would not work with this. They wouldn't hear of it. Nothing. I even said, let me keep renting out these homes so these people won't lose their homes. Right. And we could keep the business going and let's just get through this storm. They wouldn't do it. When the bank ended up getting uh, charged with an embezzlement or Mm -hmm. however, I don't know if it was embezzlement, but the guys were, the whole bank that had our loan um, were... uh, taking advantage of me and other yes. places like this. Right. So I had to foreclose, I had to, not foreclose, I had to mortgage everything that I owned. So I had a motor home that I mortgaged, my dad's pickup truck I mortgaged, I had a uh, my mom and dad's Your own mom personal and dad's house, house that yeah. was built out of rough sawn lumber. It was a cabin, it wasn't really a log home. Um, it, was, it was rough looking, but man, it was a beautiful little cottage. Had to yeah. mortgage it. I mortgaged everything. The office, everything, uh, wouldn't it? Trailers that I had mm-hmm. my tools in. Yeah. Uh, any kind of vehicle, everything, everything was mortgaged, everything. and the only thing they didn't want was my '97 F250 Ford. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's the only thing we left in. Mm-hmm. Um, they didn't know I had hand tools in place. I had some drills and saws and stuff that we ended up having to take it to a flea market mm-hmm. and sell for a three four hundred dollar drill. We sold for twenty five thirty bucks. Yeah. And uh, but anyway, that was done, and that's what happened there. So we didn't file bankruptcy. We didn't. It was there was nothing to file. Right. It was gone, you know. But we knew how to work, and that's what I said, you know. And I I listen to a lot of these motivational guys about people who want to make a business run and go. I remember Arnold Schwarzenegger said, "You just have to work," and you got to work, and you got to keep working. Mm-hmm. And now it's a Sunday, and we're working, and I don't mind that at all. This is a dream and a passion that we have. But that's one thing we have done, Amanda, me, um, David at the time that was there, you were not gonna outwork us. And we still carry that, that character with us, as you guys have known if you followed us for years. So again, why am I bringing this all up this morning is to, to bring you our character. We are bringing on new developments here. I know that I'm pushing this harder than, and faster than any tiny home company in the United States. It seems like this tiny home life or tiny home community, which I mean is world uh, nationwide here, that everybody vlogs and blogs and talks and they want to talk about where do I put my tiny home? Is it legal? If it's not legal? And all these tiny homes, right? And then, hey, look at my house. I got this amenity and that amenity and all that. And it's kind of a tight knit club feeling. I don't feel like I'm a part of that club. All right. I don't get out there and I don't talk to guys. I'm not in the vlogs. I'm not in the blogs. I'm not in the, the, the newsletters. Nobody asks me my opinion. Nobody comes to me and asks me anything. But we've developed a $20,000 house in an assembly line, which nobody's done, and it's affordable housing. Well, also, we're taking land that nobody wanted, and we put something here. Like, we've got 34 acres in an industrial park, which nobody wanted. Nobody believed that we could even have a community. Now we've got 170 people living here. And the city and the county here didn't believe it was going to happen, you know. And that was fine. I've had that all my life, that that can't happen. Just like them stilts and Brothers Cove and the war that we had on that property was an amazing war. I'm talking war. We had adversity on top of adversity, but succeeded, right? So that's the same thing here. We're getting adversity from this place and from other things that we have here. And we'll persevere as we are. And you guys have seen our accomplishments in these three communities. So I'm starting another community and we have the 70 lots that we talked about it and it's a new development and it's called The Grove, right? Excuse my penmanship, but it's called The Grove. Now The Grove is the last of the communities on this 34 acres. We're going to have approximately 70 lots and they're really bitty lots and I admit their lots are I'm small and they are 25 by 40. They're made like an RV lot. But on that lot is a home, right? That's 12 foot wide by 20 foot long. And you can see how close there is to the edge. That's probably what, a couple feet here and a couple feet there. And then you got another lot and another lot. And there's a row of about 11 to 12 homes, just like that. And we've had a guy send us a really beautiful visual artistic rendering of what those all look like and they put their car here right here's your car and here's the road and then we're going to put privacy fencing 
down each side of one of these things. And we've already talked about this, but in that 75, and it's a $75,000 price tag on this. And what we're doing, as you guys seen in one of our videos, and we're going to show you that house, is we put a front porch on it now. And it's a covered front porch. And we're going to paint it, and we're going to underpin it, and we're going to put a washer and dryer in it, a refrigerator, um, <clears throat> microwave. It's painted inside. It's ready to move in, ready to go. You can decorate it how you would like when you're done, when we're done. Swing. What's that? Skirting. Porch skirting, swing. yeah. Porch swing, skirting, all of it. Mm -hmm. So that's these lots in the grove. And so us developing this grove, and as you guys know too, we've got a development called the mountain. All right? M-O-U-N-T-A-I-N. All right? And the mountain is 160 acres, and I plan on developing acres. A-C-R-E-S. Okay. I plan on developing the 160 acres if we have people that are interested in doing it. Mm -hmm. We can't do it without you. Got to have people want to want to live there. This is in the process right here. The Grove is ready. We showed you the, dupli the, the model home that can go on there. It's a beautiful model home. Not only is it a, a beautiful model home, we actually can produce 70 homes in about 70 days, right? So in about two and a half months, we can build all those homes and have them ready to go. That's an amazing feat that I think that can be done. So we know we can build the homes by the end of the year. And that's we because there's an assembly line. Because we have an assembly line mm -hmm. established. We also know that the land that the Grove is going on, which we'll show you, has been already designated, it's leveled. The sewer, the water, the power, and everything is right along the perimeter of that land. We just have to tap into it. And the simplicity of building this is really unique. And so that's how you, why we're saying we could have this thing done by the end of the year. Yeah. So we've thrown some numbers around and we're willing to take, we said before that, hey, we needed all 70 to build this thing before we can do it. And some people are saying, hey, We've had a lot of people, you know, I, I, we haven't had 70, but a lot of people say, I want to be in it. Nobody said I have the money to do it yet. But I did some calculations of figuring out, okay, what's our minimum amount of number of homes that we have to have to say, hey, you know what? At least we can get this thing rolling and it substantiates enough for us to have the landscaping done, the surroundings and all that stuff. And, and we know that it'll look nice, right? And to right? keep it going, so it doesn't and keep it going. Yes, keep it going. Yeah. So what we need from every from though the number of homes that we need for the Grove to work, mm -hmm. and we want to make that happen until the end of August. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna erase this right here. You know oh yeah, that's fine. Let me pull this off. Let's you can do this take those here. off if you want to. Yeah. Well, so I just want to show everybody. So at the end of August, what is August got? Thirty-one days. Thirty-one. So August thirty-first. All right is when we hope you guys because we got to be if because we're going to be developing this land a little bit i can't put a lot of money in it mm -hmm. but if we're going to put some fill and get it ready and we can order but by august 31st we need 20 homes 20 commitments if you're committed to that home right now and you say i want on there and i want one of the first 20 homes all right the first 20 home buyers right now if you give us a 20 percent deposit that is refundable. We will give it back to you if we do not get the 20 homes. Mm -hmm. All right, so it's a refundable deposit. Deposit. We will hold that deposit until August 31st. If we reach our 20 goal, then we'll of course lock your, uh, your deposit into a contract and done. Mm -hmm. We need you need to be approved, right? Mm -hmm. Is it two O's? A P P R O V E D. One O. Mm -hmm. You need to be approved for your loan or proof of finances, right? Mm -hmm. That way we know, hey, when we got 20, yeah. you're a real 20. We know that you guys are invested and you're going. I'm just trying to just make sense out of this sure. simple process. So if we can do that, we could put 20 homes in the grove. And then we'll keep growing as we, we can. But we know we can accomplish what we wanted to start in the Grove, mm -hmm. right? And then we can grow. And I was thinking about it this morning. We have 73 homes in the forest. And it took, a, it took 
the first 30 to get it off the ground. It's mm -hmm. going to take the first 20 to get this off the ground. Right. Okay, so I, we can work with this. And yeah. I think once we show how this is rolling, this is going to be a cool thing. Oh, I think so too. All right. So now uh, probably connect, are you getting ready to talk about the mountain and while we talked about that, I figured out. Okay. Yeah. So exact, that's exactly where I was going. Okay, yeah. I figured so. So now the mountain. Now the mountain is a different development mm -hmm. it it's different financially it's different uh feeling mm -hmm. it's got its own get those off there. its own way of, in a different these this is a community this is a nice tight neat neat community mm -hmm. that you get you know your neighbors and and all that and, and there's some privacy too but the mountain and the reason i showed you the cliff dwellers and i showed you what's going on there is how I, I call the cliff dwellers. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. All right, and I told you the mountain. And the mountains over here, they're not as steep as Brothers Cove. Okay. Where Brothers Cove was like this. Yes. And it was steep. Very steep. Okay. This one's not like that. This is my proposed development on the mountain as we go. Now, the first, we have about 80 lots that are already done. We're developing we're going to hopefully get them done by the end of the year also people living on the mountain and going and that's a the first group of people and that's a it's kind of like an offshoot where you don't go through that development mm -hmm. to get anywhere else they are right. completely secluded on the mountain where there won't be a thoroughfare going through their development right so it's kind of cool and the, the reason why you're bringing this up today is we're getting bombarded by people yeah. do you have any lots so that's kind of what sparked all this. People are wanting lots, lots, wanting lots. lots. All right. Yes. So we're mountain people. We're mountain land. I don't have pasture. I got the 75, mm -hmm. 70 lots there that we'll be doing on the Grove. Right. I've come up with an idea, and I'm researching it right now with my engineer friend, actually, who did the, the mm -hmm. development in Brothers Cove. And that's why yeah. I wanted to show you what we've done in the past. Is that when you build a road, you key that road in just like this. And you remove that amount of earth and then that road goes around the mountain right and the road goes all the way around well then if you have a house below the road you have to key that in again and you got to get rid of all that loose dirt and you got to come back and then you fill it with all this dirt right mm -hmm. and then, then when you get up here dirt just doesn't go straight up and down it's got to go like this, all right? And you compact it and 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 compact it until you have this platform. Mm -hmm. And then we dump topsoil on top of this so we can grow grass and one day there's trees growing and all that stuff, right? Mm -hmm. That's an, an enormous amount of work. Yeah. And dirt and earth that you and have cost. to bring in from another part of the mountain and the development. And it's just, that's what we've done before. So... I came up a little bit of an idea, and you guys are saying, oh, I know where he's going. He's going to do the platform. Well, not necessarily. Not quite. So let me show you what I've got in mind. And this is, please, your criticism and your ideas are great, but I'm still researching this, and this is why I like doing what I do, because I like researching and finding out, because this is the fun part for me. So what I've proposed in a concept is all this gravel underneath here waterproofing that's a pipe waterproofing and i'm going to put here i don't want to say it i'm just going to put one who's already said it here's a little handle a container and i'm going to set a container on top of that flat spot right there as you guys know containers are only strong on the corners so if you look at a container it's only strong on these four corners it is not strong in here you can't set anything on top of that it'll crumble all right so we are setting i-beams across the entire length of that container right and then we're going to set floor joists out like that. And then we're going to brace them back to the bottom of that thing. 
and it's going to go the whole length. And then we're going to have this big, huge deck. And believe it or not, you're going to park your car on it and your house on it. And we're going to have railings all the way around this thing. And you're going to have a beautiful panoramic view all around that entire mountain. We're going to put a staircase down that goes down to here. So if you're looking down on the platform, we're proposing it to be 40 by 20. And the staircase goes down to your container underneath the house. Now the container, we're going to spray foam the back of it. We're going to waterproof the entire thing. It's going to be painted black. The inside is going to be spray foamed. So if you want to, you can remodel this, put a family room down in it later on, use it for storage. It could be a cellar. It could be anything you want. It's not going to have dirt pushed against the side of it because we're going to leave this freestanding and put just gravel back here, right? So the water goes down under the house and flows. As you guys know, water is a big culprit for anything in construction. So the flow of this water, the gravel, uh, this is the container is up off of the ground. It's not sitting on the ground where it'll rot and it'll rust. This is all steel. And this is what I'm working on right now is with a friend of mine, the engineer, and how the what materials we'll be using, if it's going to be bar joist, steel I-beams, or how we're going to do this. And you're saying, wow, how much is that going to cost? What's going to be? And that's what we're working on in the efficiency of it. It's going to be a lot quicker, a lot more efficient than what we did over there at Brothers Cove. Brothers Cove had big, huge beams, big, huge concrete, cranes, concrete everywhere. It was just... This a, replaces concrete and dirt and all no, that work. There's no concrete here. No concrete. There's no dirt. All gravel. No topsoil, no nothing. We put a, a container. These containers will probably already have the 40-foot I-beams on them. Mm -hmm. We'll set them, put our floor joist, deck it. We're ready to go. And I was thinking this morning. And I told, they're not to be moved. This is a part of the lot. That's the lot. Mm -hmm. They're never to be moved. So when you get a lot, you get this on the lot. This is what you're buying. You're buying the container, everything. This is a. You can put windows under here. You can put doors. You could put a deck out here if you wanted later on. You, this is yours to do whatever you want later on. And it's all black. So when you look up in the, if from the road below you, you just see a dark. You know, it blends in with the mountain, you know. I love it because we've been, we're able to take a contour that normally nobody builds on, and we're able to utilize this and give it so much more depth and, and livability because of this deck and because of this, you know. So that's what I'm, and I know that's outside the box, isn't it? Yeah, and, I mean, it's, when you, said the idea you came up with it was just um, unbelievable so and, and are they they're 40 foot they're 40 foot containers now i'm sure you guys your brains are like dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a -dig -a all these ideas which is fun and i like when everybody starts thinking about what they would do and all this stuff i've had james here he said well girl we could do we could do two of them if the road if the mountain was too steep you know and stack two of them on top of each other and go um I'm not doing that. Our mountain is not really that steep out here compared to what we're used to. There's mm -hmm. a couple areas that are pretty steep, but most majority this is the only reason I would bring this out to the public and to the world and expose my vulnerability to you guys right now is that it is feasible. This is a, this is a very strong concept that um, I think I've looked into it enough that it could happen. Yeah. The only thing now is it, is it financially feasible for you all to be able to invest in to this. To do it, yeah. And I, and I'm like anything else we've done here. We try to keep our costs down low. That it's that it is makes sense. That it's not going to be like one of those foundations. Those foundations there were over a hundred grand to put in. Oh, absolutely. You know? And these, we don't. Not going to be that. It's going. We're. This is going to be amazing thing that we want the common man to be able to have this. And you're doing this. You're you're just kind of wanting to show where the mountain is headed. Yeah. Correct. Yep. Yeah. And. We want to go that route. Um, if if our sales and our business grows and everything, I'll probably do that anyway, even if people aren't 
jumping on saying, hey, I want to be a part of the Cliff Dwellers, you know? Right. Mm -hmm. and, you and, want to, and I think that's a great name, Cliff Dwellers. Yeah. You guys will be the Cliff Dwellers. Yeah. There's no other place in the world, in the country, that people are doing this. No. And you're you're going to have a tiny home. And what I love about it, you can put a tiny home on that platform. I would love for it all to be ESPs, but I'm sure there are going to be people that are going to want some of our model homes on there, right? It's a little limited to the size of homes on there. But, you know, again, I am a real true tiny home advocate. I'm yeah. not one for a modular home. It is tiny homes. And mm -hmm. the the Airbnb on that would be amazing. Oh, the absolutely. The investing would be amazing, you know? Sure. So all the details about the land and the ownerships and the longevity and all that stuff will be, will be detailed out in another video and how mm -hmm. we'll go about and how we're going to try to make all that work. But this is where I'm going with the mountain. If we do that, and if we able to have enough interest in doing this, what we would like to do is all the valleys and the hollers that we have are going to be common ground. Mm -hmm. There's some beautiful, we call them hollers here, they're beautiful, kind of, they're wide and they're grassy, and I want it to be a park-like setting, mm -hmm. and everybody lives in the cliffs, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, if we, if we can make this happen, that's where my dream is going for the mountain. It's not just to cluster homes in the in the bottom areas, right. which most people can build on flat. These are going to be built on cliffs. Okay. So anyway, there you go. If you want to go to brotherscove.com, you can go go stay at this place. This is uh this is something that you know we built. We physically built these homes. Tom, this is on the third phase. This is at the very top. Third phase. I haven't thought about Remember that. Remember that? Long time. Oh my God. Yep. But I called it Brothers Co. because it was um, from my boys. I had two boys, and they were brothers, and so we named it Brothers Co. This company, whoever owns it now, has actually taken that logo, and they still use the same logo that I had. And, you know, I guess I'm showing you all these things, and you guys, I'm sure you're on it right now on your own, on your own uh, computers. But if I go to a three-bedroom, see these homes here? We designed them. All this glass down here? is every house had at a minimum of $15,000 just in fixed glass. Oh yeah. These furniture packages are the same furniture that we had. It was old hickory. When we left it. Yeah. Old hickory is the same furniture they have at Yellowstone um, Lodge. Mm-hmm. And it's actually, they, they harvest the old hickory furniture at a certain time of year so the bark stays on it, like that table. See the bark yeah. on that table? It stays on it, on the legs and yeah. everything. But it's really cool. Look at the view. Yep. And you know, we have similar views over here on this mountain. Here's a, a fireplace. We laid all the stone. I remember love laying stone on these yeah, fireplaces. I Here's, used to love these. You would do, yeah. you would do those. These are real rustic stone fireplaces. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I always had the newest guy lay the stone. And he didn't know anything about it. And I said, that's what I want. I don't want you to know anything about it. Yeah. And when he got done, I said, I want it to look like a, a pioneer or a farmer built his fireplace. Yeah. And it was real gnarly looking mm -hmm. and real organic and natural looking, you know. And too, remember that we, um, I think we've mentioned this before, but what year was it? We were, on Southern, we were in Southern Living. October of October 07. October of 2007. So we were on the... We we're on the cover. We weren't on the cover. We were in. Um, it was a featured story. Featured story in. So Southern, Southern Living, Southern Living came to Sevier County, and they did a survey of all the rental companies in the area, mm -hmm. and they took pictures of us, and we actually won an award of the best pool, yeah, uh, area. Which you named resort. it the Cement Pond, yeah. and it is gorgeous, and that is where the wedding venue is. You you built the Countryman's Lodge. Yeah, I and they it got was. That. Uh, massive and that has become the one of the the number if not I, I would say it could be the number one wedding destination in um, Pigeon Forge yeah there's the lodge has four fireplaces in it glass surrounds all of it yeah I mean you built all of it it's just amazing I only have pictures of the lodge on there yeah. I know they don't have the whole lodge this is the inside of it but it is massive yeah I'm surprised they don't have a picture of the outside of it. Yeah. But it is. Oh, look at the weddings. Do Isn't they have cool? one outside? Well, this is uh, the reception area is a lodge, and they get married under the gazebo, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. 
So, well, anyway, Randy we're got a lot of flack for using that as not a not selling that lot. That great. Oh yeah, lot. it was everybody. I, well, I could have put my own personal home on there because right. it was the view. It was, was the best spot. It's an amazing, amazing. But I said, why take the most gorgeous spot on that mountain mm -hmm. and put my own personal home? I thought, let's share it with the world. And that's what we did. We put a pool there. Yeah, and there's been a ton of people get married there, and they have their parties up there. So. And we called it, I called it the Countryman's Lodge mm -hmm. because of um, one of my favorite movies, Braveheart. Mm -hmm. And he called all his men in Scotland countrymen. Yeah. All my countrymen, you know. And I thought, wow, that's a team. That's a, that's a clan. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. And so I wanted it to be the Countryman's Lodge. It was and that's beautiful. why we named it that. So it was really beautiful. All right, I'm gonna be done with this. I hope this is kind of a Sunday morning thought, throwing out mm -hmm. ideas. Hopefully, it's something that encourages you. I hope it's something that you say, "Hey, I want to be a part of what you guys are go got going on over there." Mm -hmm. What's different about Brothers Cove and what we got here is there's not a note to a bank on this place. Right. We own everything. Mm -hmm. All right. There's no loans. There's no. There's no lines of credit. There's nothing. We have. We own it. It's done. They can't take it away from us. Right. So we can't, if the, if the economy collapses, we just all just hunker down and mm -hmm. stay together. You know. Mm -hmm. So I will not take another loan to keep going. That's why I don't grow unless you guys are interested in what we're doing. So I come to you saying, hey, this is who we are. This is who I am. These are the homes we build. This is the kind of homes we do have. And this is what we've accomplished in the past. Mm -hmm. And you see 160 plus homes that are already here. They got water, power, and sewer, city, everything. So we're just showing you how we've, how we've proven ourselves over the years to give you some sort of comfort to invest in us. Mm -hmm. All right? So, all right, everybody. Have a great day. Enjoy your Sunday. And uh, this is Amanda and Randy saying good morning. Hi. Follow us. And we'll see you around. <laughs>